mountain driving should be a joyful and thrilling experience. To make it so, like any other trip, it should begin at home with the fun of anticipation and planning. By tracing the proposed route on a map, estimating the distance to be traveled, the kind of roads to be encountered, the highest elevation to be attained, how long and steep the grades, and the weather conditions, including predicted temperatures. Then passengers and automobile can be well prepared and make sure the trip is pleasurable. The laws of nature, and man-made laws too, that regulate normal driving, continue in force in the mountains. But steep and narrow roads with sharp turns and blind curves make the effect of nature's laws more evident and additional man-made laws more necessary. Mountain drivers must use more skill, practice more self-discipline, and display a more cooperative spirit while being unceasingly alert and ready for the unexpected. Too often, we hear of disasters caused by mechanical failure on mountain grades, which a little preparation could have prevented. Before venturing into the mountains, even for a short trip, one should make sure every part of the car is in good condition. Brakes, upon which life so often depends, should be carefully checked for condition of lining and proper adjustment. The cooling system should be checked for leaks and properly adjusted fan belt. Have the battery checked. Make sure there is adequate oil in the engine, transmission, and differential. It might make the difference between a pleasant trip and a breakdown with distressing delay and even costly repairs. Only the most careless driver would venture into the mountains without good tires, including a spare, and tools for changing them. Mountain weather is so unpredictable, one should be prepared with tire chains for mud or snow from sudden storms. Other very desirable emergency equipment includes extra water, tow line, small shovel, and a spare fan belt. Also important are safety reflectors and flares. For sure, a good treble light. And a pair of jumper cables for borrowing a start from a friend in case the battery goes dead. On mountain roads, lines are a type of safety barrier. They might also be called lifelines because of their importance to safe driving. Each type of line has a silent message for all good drivers. Only the heavily traveled mountain roads have double lines that forbid passing at dangerous places. Generally, there is only a single center line which may be broken, and often there is no line at all. One should never, but never, try to pass another vehicle when the view ahead is obstructed, regardless of lines. On a road that has no lines, one must be extra careful to stay well to the right on curves. When overtaking other vehicles on little used roads, a friendly beep beep of the horn before passing is a welcome safety precaution. There are also additional road signs for the assistance and safety of motorists. Some warn of hazards such as watch for livestock, deer crossing, and populated area, where one must drive more slowly and be more alert for thoughtless acts of people. On other signs, the shape of an arrow indicates the shape of curves ahead and may suggest the safe speed. Good drivers slow down before reaching the curve, not in it. 
Other signs warn of narrow road, slide area, and watch for rocks, narrow bridge, etc. Read them, heed them, and protect them, for they are truly signs of life. Smoking while driving is always hazardous, but driving with a cigarette in one hand, smoke in one's eyes, or an ember dropped on the seat, which have caused so many disasters on straight roads, are even more hazardous on winding mountain roads. Particularly in mountain areas, smokers should exercise restraint. During dry seasons, forests, and brush-covered areas are great fire hazards. All too often, tragic loss of valuable watershed, property, wildlife, and even human life results from a smoker's carelessness. The law and moral rules for smoking should be scrupulously followed. A man-caused fire is inexcusable and may become manslaughter. The out of doors is for all to enjoy, and all should help protect it from irresponsible people. For anything falling from or thrown out of a car, the driver may be fined and held responsible for damages. The weight of extra equipment and more people that often go on trips to the mountains retard acceleration. That is, it takes more energy, horsepower, a longer time to increase the speed of the heavier load. And it takes even longer when going uphill against the pull of gravity. And in the mountains, as the car climbs higher, the engine's power decreases about 1% each 100 feet of elevation until at really high altitudes even large engines give very little acceleration. Heavy loads, steep grades, high altitudes, these three each retard acceleration. Together, they may make acceleration impossible. So, before trying to pass, make sure that there is enough clear road ahead to pass safely. On narrow winding roads, where the view ahead is short, one slow driver can hold many back and make them very unhappy. And sometimes impatient drivers get so unhappy, they get careless and try to pass unwisely. Such too often ends in disaster. When a driver is unable to keep up with traffic, holding others back is pardonable if he permits them to pass at the first opportunity. On some narrow winding roads, special turnouts are provided and announced by appropriate signs. Use of turnouts by slower vehicles may be required by law, but good and thoughtful drivers don't have to be told or forced to share the road. They choose to. If the road is steep and the load heavy, keeping the engine cool may be a real problem, especially in hot weather. If the engine overheats from hard, slow work, shift to a lower gear. The higher engine speed helps cooling by increasing the flow of water and cooling air through the radiator. Higher engine speeds are even more important to the cooling of automatic transmissions and air-cooled engines. If the engine overheats in spite of precautions, stop at the first opportune place and let it cool. Raising the hood will help the heat escape. But don't ever take the cap off a hot radiator. You could be seriously burned, and you would lose water that might be hard to replace. This might be a good time to look at the sights or to eat lunch while the engine cools. 
If you are eager to keep moving and water is plentiful, while the engine runs slowly, pour water on the radiator, over the top and down the front, until the boiling stops. Then cautiously, turn the radiator cap first to the safety stop to release the pressure, then off. But always, if you must put water in a hot radiator, run the engine while you pour the water in slowly. Passengers should enjoy the trip, but in the interests of all, they should not distract the driver. A stop to rest, stretch, and look has many benefits. Convenient and safe off-the-road parking places are often strategically located at view spots. When convenient, park on the right-hand side. If you must turn left, cross the line of traffic to park, Plan ahead. Choose a place well away from blind curves. When safe, cross promptly. Never linger in a place of danger. A vehicle carelessly parked on a slope may start moving while unattended and become a deadly projectile hurling down the mountain. Many parking brakes are unreliable, so for safety's sake, Park near a bank or curb with your wheels turned so that if the car moves downhill, the wheels will be stopped by that obstruction. Then set the parking brake firmly and shift the automatic transmission to park or the manual shift to reverse. If no bank or curb is available, put a piece of wood or a big rock under one or more wheels. Then the car may be left without worry. But before driving away, remove the block from the roadway. Entering a mountain road can be hazardous when the view is restricted by a curve or shrubbery. Enter that road with extra caution, but not hesitation. Use both blinker and hand signal. Look both ways. When safe, go promptly and keep going. Avoid slowing down in front of another vehicle. Remember, going downhill, gravity lengthens the other car's stopping distance too. Allow a little extra room, quite a little. It's living room. Some of the most enjoyable mountain roads are those in the back country that have no signs, where a driver is on his own. The curves may be sharp and banked the wrong way, and the dirt surface gives poor traction. Here, one travels slowly and is extra alert, for the view of the road is very short, and a quick stop may be necessary any moment. When vehicles meet on a road that is too narrow for passing, the one traveling uphill has the right of way. The car traveling downhill may have to back up to a passing place. Some backcountry roads, the most delightful ones, are little more than a pair of wheel ruts. Travel may be very slow, dusty or muddy, depending on the weather. Here, cooperation is the unwritten rule of the road. And here, no right kind of person leaves another in need of help. High altitude, with less oxygen and lower air pressure, that lowers the power of a car, may do somewhat the same to a person, causing drowsiness or even serious illness. If you are so affected, do not try to drive. Rest and let your body adjust to these different conditions. Alcohol always a major threat to safe driving, multiplies the harmful effects of high altitude on people. Only the most foolish and thoughtless invite disaster by using alcohol with gasoline at any time. But high altitude makes it even more dangerous.
The same gravity that held back on the car going uphill tends to make it run faster going down. Now the forces of gravity increases the burden on tires and brakes and on the skill of the driver too. Going downhill, tires have less grip on the road, require longer to slow down and stop. Prolonged braking tends to overheat brakes and cause them to fade, that is, become less effective or even fail. When fade is evident, one should let the brakes cool by parking if necessary. New brakes can be completely worn out in one day or even one hour coming down a mountain. But a safe and skillful driver may use less brakes in the mountains than in city driving. He will often use the engine's hold back power instead of brakes by shifting to a lower gear. He might leave it in low gear and step on the throttle to speed up on a short straight stretch. Then, as he nears the next turn, lift his foot off the throttle and let the engine slow the car down. The best drivers may stay in low gear, uphill and down, and around sharp turns for many miles with a saving of time as well as brakes and tires. Curves up and down, back and forth, always changing the view of nature's wonders. That is what mountain roads are made of and what makes driving on them so rewarding. But those curves are the scenes of many disasters caused by driving too fast for conditions and cutting across blind turns into murderous head-on collisions. On some curves, the surface of the road slants the wrong way, and it may be bumpy, wet from a spring, iced and slippery in cold weather, or covered with loose dirt. Then tires have little grip on the road and little resistance to centrifugal force. Fast and careless drivers who can't stop after seeing the danger find themselves in serious trouble. Less important mountain roads may have no guardrails. Then the shoulder of the road may be the last barrier to disaster. Experienced drivers avoid the shoulders of the road except in emergencies. If you are forced off the road, use great care. Do not turn the wheels sharply or use the brake except very cautiously. If the shoulder is soft, rough, or rocky, turning sharply or braking heavily might stop the wheel on the shoulder, causing it to plow and throw the car out of control. Use care to stay on the roadway and never force others onto the shoulder. After dark, mountain driving is less rewarding except when looking down on the lights of a city. But contrary to what many expect, night driving is relatively safe in the mountains because the lights shining ahead give reliable warning even around curves. But making sure one's lights do not blind other drivers is most important on narrow winding roads. If you are blinded by the lights of another car, it is often good to stop well to the right and switch to parking lights to improve the vision of the other driver while passing. When overtaking and passing other vehicles, your lights should be on low beam and the other car's lights should be on high beam to light the road as far ahead as possible. When you are even with the other vehicle, lights should be switched his to low beam and yours on high to keep the road illuminated well ahead. While mountain driving should be a most rewarding and joyful experience, it could be a nightmare depending on the driver. So let's review a few of the more important practices of the good driver.
he makes sure both he and his car are in good condition, that he, the driver, is mentally undisturbed and physically fit. He makes sure the tires are good and properly inflated, that the brakes are good, and that he has adequate emergency equipment, such as spare tire and mounting tools, warning flares, and a trouble light. He also considers a spare fan belt, extra water, and tire chains. And on the trip, he keeps the car's reservoirs well filled with water, oil, and gasoline. Especially on mountain roads, the good driver is ever alert with all his senses to know the ever-changing conditions of the weather, the roadway, his car, and passengers, as well as himself. He allows extra time and space for acceleration going uphill and for deceleration going down for both his car and the car behind. He watches for and heeds the messages of signs and lines. Good drivers show their superior skill by driving smoothly and considerately. Mountain driving is for all to enjoy. Good drivers help keep it enjoyable.